Ivodink SA. Thank you very much, Wagner. Over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, thank you, Stephanie, for that for a nice introduction. Um, yes, today I will be talking about Mexico Composite um, and um, how you can actually achieve a really nice result within the laboratory. Um, the pink and white harmony is very important. Um, it's, there's always a question of how much white is possible and how much pink is necessary. Um, in most cases, the, the white part is, the, uh, is uh, um, dictated by the, the buccal corridor, the occlusal height, the incisal edge. Um, but as we can see, these are two uh, before and after pictures. Um, and the pink just rounds off the, the bridge perfectly. Um, when we come back to basics, um, a composite is uh, made of two or more materials with different physical and chemical properties. And when they are combined, they've got a different characteristic to those individual components. Um, yes, I know all of you know how to work with composites. I just needed to remind you a little bit. You get direct and indirect composites. The indirect is uh, also known as the lab composites. Um, macro and micro and hybrid fillers um, together with the, the matrix um, form, form uh, is, is, is what uh, forms the composite. Um, in, um, in direct composites, uh, they have um, more monomer um, in their matrix, um, and this gives it a self-leveling um, uh, uh, characteristic, which we don't really need in, in a laboratory. We need, we need something that has a bit more filler filler material um, that can be uh, uh, more malleable. Um, indirect composites are, when you look at the different, different types, they're 70 to 80% filler, um, 18 to 30% monomer, uh, one or to 3% pigments. And those include the, your photo initiators, whether it's camphocanone or um, um, ivoserine, which is the, the, the Ivoclar Vivident um, photo initiator. Um, the balance within the filler, between the fillers and the matrix, determine the type of material, whether it's a macro um, composite, micro, micro or hybrid. Um, in the case of the Nexco composite, it's a micro hybrid nano filler. Um, the nano is actually, um, it has opalescence and fluorescence um, uh, characteristics within them, and that's uh, when um, normal um, light is, is shined on them, they look very natural. Um, when we look at the Nexco composite, is a, it's a purely light cure material. Um, it only uses the, the photo initiators to um, to uh, accelerate and to uh, start the, the polymerization process. Um, the previous um, composite from Ivoclar Iver was Adoro, and that was a, a heat and um, a light cure material. Um, it's independent of the light curing device. Um, I've I wrote there in brackets, um, the wavelength and intensity is important. Um, lab composites, uh, because they have more fillers in them, they um, tend to actually have a high, they have a need for a higher intensity uh, light curing unit um, to actually cure the unit. So those little, um, special tray or those nail um, UV lights that you do your special trays in um, won't work unless you have the right um, uh, lamp 
uh, inside them. Uh, the next composite is, uh, is true to nature, like I said, because of those nano fillers, which give it the opalescence. Um, it has a lasting shade and color stability. Uh, it uses the conventional layering, the intrinsic build-up technique, uh, which most of you are used to, and it gives it a nice controlled working time as well. It's user-friendly, um, it's, it's quite soft uh, and malleable, like I said, uh, and in the, it has an extremely low polymerization shrinkage because of all the, the or inorganic filler particles inside them. Looking at that, the big photo on your right hand side, um, I actually had to include the, the, the whole picture because the gum work on that case was done really well. Um, my wife said, well, I, she can't even see that uh, it is uh, indeed composite. It looks lifelike. Um, so there's a big need for high-end aesthetics, whether it's crown or bridge work, whether it's um, normal run-of-the-mill denture work. Um, we all need to up our game because of social media. The patient expectations are super high. Dentist expectations are even higher. Um, so we all need to really up our game when it comes to the aesthetics, um, pink and white. Uh, individualizing your prosthetic work and not making each denture that comes out of the lab look like a, a factory molded denture um, is also quite pleasing for the technician. Um, and so. <clears throat> Uh, yes, um, surface smoothness and durability, um, that has a lot to do with um, how, how you will be layering and curing um, the individual components. Looking at these two dentures, I'm slowing a little bit down because I think there's a bit of a lag. Um, with the internet. So I'm slowing a little bit down. <laughs> when you look at the two dentures and compare them, the one is really aesthetic and the other one I would rather call a substitute. Um, it looks like something that I might have made in my first year or second year. Um, it's, there's nothing to it. Obviously it's functional. Um, it will work and the patient will will maybe not know it know the difference but when you compare the two um, I, I think all of us would ra rather like the more aesthetic denture Mimic mimicking the natural um, that is what we aim to achieve um, with any prosta prosta work um, and Ivoclar has a biofunctional prosthetic system in place um, with different components in them. And I can tell you the centric tray, um, that tray on the left in the middle of the two impressions, uh, a sl it's a greenish color. Um, it gives an initial centric relation while they're doing the, the preliminary impressions uh, and that saves um, saves some labs even a whole appointment because you can uh, do your basic articulation within those centric trays do your bite blocks with the nanometers uh, on them and the the dentist will get a better a reading of the occlusal di vertical dimension um, Ivoclar has fantastic teeth. Uh, Ivoclar has fantastic teeth and different acrylics um, and different ways to, to actually produce the denture. Um, and we'll be running through them quickly and then go back to our next co-composite because I can't explain the, 
the composite without the base. Um, so when we look at the different styles of teeth, uh, there are actually five different uh, variations of Ivoclaw teeth. In South Africa, we mainly sell the Funaris II. Uh, the Ivostar is the, the champion in South Africa. And then we have the, the DCL and the PE teeth. Um, the PE teeth uh, are, uh, are just, um, the DCL is an upgrade of the, piece, uh, the PE teeth. The PE teeth normally came out with the, the old chromoscope colors, uh, like a 2A instead of an A2, um, which you will actually need a, um, a chart to, to, um, to know which, which uh, color is the Vita shade color. Um, you get numerous shades, numerous mold sizes um, that really look natural. When we get to the acrylics, there's the heat cure option, there's the cold cure option for, for repairs and such, or, or chrome cobalt work. It's stable in its shape, stable in its color. You get the most popular ones are the pink B, the pink and the clear. Um, it's easy to use and it's very accurate. Um, when we get to the Ivo base and the Ivo cap, there are a few systems in South Africa. Um, it's injection mole, it's injection technique. Um, it's controlled polymerization, which gives you a really, really um, good occlusal um, fit. Uh, your your occlusal dimension is is. Is really really close to what your wax up was. Um, you don't need to grind in as much as as you would uh, normally. It also has the option of the elastomer bite splints. It's a softer uh, material that you can make anti snoring devices. When we look at the actual shade guide. Uh, it you can see on the shade guide on the left hand side, it's written Emacs, Inline, Nexco, and and uh, Nexco and Style, um, and this is a this is part of a complete system, so that everything is standardized. You've got the five gingiva basic colors, uh, you've got the intensive gingiva colors, five of them, um, and you've got the one basic. BG32, which normally you would start off with uh, when, when doing your next go buildups. Uh, you also have uh, a pink opaque, which you will apply to your metal surfaces. And you've got eight fantastic little stains that you can also mix into your um, general or your, your uh, um, intensive gingiva. Um, to get a different, even a different color. So the palette just keeps on growing. Um, I cured most of my buildups with um, the blue face, the handheld blue face uh, unit, the G2. Um, it is actually more uh, a dentist uh, light curing unit, but because of the excellent um, uh, light intensity, I could cure a lot faster um, than that recommendation um, on my first first uh, bullet there. Um, it just says if the curing unit um, output is 650 milliwatt per square centimeter, uh, Nexco pre-cured is 20 seconds, uh, 30 seconds for the gingiva, 20, uh, 40 seconds for the dentine, and a final cure of 10 minutes. Light curing units can, most of them in the dental field are either halogen or LEDs. The, the, the handheld um, blue phase is a LED uh, polywave, which, which is really an impressive, impressive light. Um, light intensity 
and wavelength is something that when you do any composites in the lab that you must be aware of. There is stuff like Lux and Lumen. Um, they are not as accurate um, in, in, how they, uh, in how they depict uh, what machine you need to use. Here is a little um, table of, of different lab, well-known lab um, units available uh, on the market. And you will maybe find yours in amongst them. Uh, and you can see different curing lights have got uh, that have different intensities will um, cure a lot faster than, than others. Photo initiators, like I said, is what triggers um, the polymerization um, of, of, of the, the composite. Um, there's a wavelength, wavelength spectrum of 320 to 510 nanometers. Uh, it's, it's near to, to ultraviolet, violet and blue. That's why the light is always a, a bluish color. Um, Ivo Serene, the photo initiator in most of the, the composites, whether it's direct or indirect, um, that Ivoclar manufacture, because it's a Ivoclar patent um, um, initiator, cures in a range of 370 to 460 nanometers. It's very, very important to look at old photos or photos that you get um, to understand how to uh, build from the inside to the outside. And, and that is called the intrinsic build-up technique. You need to understand those 11 um, uh, colors that you would use uh, to build up or even mix a little bit of the chili or the mahogany uh, and get deeper brownish colors where you need, it, you need them or darker purple where you, where you need them. The material thickness to cure these um, needs to be a maximum of two millimeters thickness um, for the light to, to penetrate uh, and cure properly right through. Adding veins, gingiva, um, it's stuff that only you will learn with time and, and true artistry will be need, necessary for this. Here is where I find this material amazing. It is very versatile. Um, you can use it on PMMA, your, your normal dentures. Uh, you, you can use them on temp, for temporary aesthetics. Um, you can use it on zirconia um, to to build up the the gum of of on your zirconia frameworks. Uh, you can use it on ceramics um, by adding adding to old old ceramic um, bridges, implant bridges especially, and the opaque for masking chrome cobalt and implant works, locators, equators, that's that sort of thing, where you will sometimes see them shining through the denture. Conditioning the surface, you need to understand which conditioner you need to use for which base, for which sub substrate. Um, the SR Connect, SR Connect is mainly for acrylics and pecton. Um, the SR link is for metals and zirconia. It forms a it's a covalent bond, so it's actually a electron bond. Uh, easy um, easy example is oxygen. It's O2, where the electrons are actually shared uh, in 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 um, in those atoms. Um, Monobond plus. Um, it's for ceramics. And when you're doing um, additions of composite within the mouth, you will use the helio bond, which is a, a little bit similar to the SR Connect. Adjusting your denture, it's important to, to, um, to note that you need to cut a, a stress breaker, a borderline into your into your denture um, 
that just like the word says it's a stress breaker so that the material won't just flake off like a like a, a flaking iceberg when it um when when pressure is applied to it um you need to roughen the area with your acrylic burrs sandblast the area very important don't steam clean it um any composite um is high is hydrophilic doesn't like water um so if you by chance um have uh steam cleaned it you need to leave it for at least 45 minutes for it to dry off um all of the water particles that have gone into the acrylic uh you need to just tap it off tap all the sand off blow it off with air and then you apply the sr connect and leave it for three minutes to react and then light cure it they on the outside there will be a sticky layer that is the inhibition layer because composite forms um, that layer uh, because it's not completely completely polymerized when we get to the metal and the zirconia substructures this is where i see most labs employing it um, is for blocking out the the chrome cobalt um, uh, frames um, so you need to sandblast it with 80 to 110 micron it's very important the the size of the aluminium oxide because that covalent bond that we talked about will actually use those um, aluminium oxide um, blastings that have been impregnated into the metal um, as the as part of the covalent bonding um, into onto the metal um, two bar pressure is enough again don't steam clean um, it's very important not to to introduce water into these um, substructures when you want to opaque them tap off air it apply the sr connect uh, sr link <laughs> Very important, there is a link on the metal. Um, opaque the metal, rather do two thin layers than one, uh, one thick layer. You get a better result and better bonding. Um, and sometimes you, you get a little bit of flaking if you try and put it on too thick. This time around, you need to remove the inhibition layer um, by taking a, a sponge. Um, and just lightly running your your sponge over the surface of that sticky inhibition layer that has formed if you don't do this um, you will get streaking in your uh, acrylic mix in your um, your 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 cold cure especially um, it, it's the monomer that rubs off that inhibition layer and forms little white streaks like marbling um, inside your, your acrylic. Implant screw retained, you can have those crowns um, in, in a hybrid situation where it's Emacs crowns or zirconia crowns on a metal frame. Um, it's very popular in the Northern Hemisphere, especially um, doing these kind of jobs because you don't always have a um, CAD CAM zirconia blank that is um, more than 25 to 30 millimeters thick. Um, so this 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 gives you an option to do zirconia crowns with um, with a gingiva base. Uh, in this situation, it was Funaris teeth um, done with the Ivo base system. It's the high impact acrylic. And the Nexco gingiva and the stains were added afterwards. Layering zirconia, it's a little bit tricky. Um, my personal suggestion and, and uh, questions that I get, why would I do this? Um, I think personally, 
it's an option uh, to do it with the Nexco, um, but uh, I would actually just do it in, in ceramic work. Um, but there is the, the option if, if you need to add um, gum, uh, gum to the, 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 the ceramic um, that you layered on, uh, on in that, that area by etching the ceramic gum and adding Nexco. Um, Northern Hemisphere, they have, uh, some guys have got different takes. They, need, they want to have a zirconia frame and a full uh, build-up in a composite material, um, which is a little bit easier for dentists then to add on later when um, stuff maybe breaks uh, due to the patient, uh, patient malocclusion or, or something like that. Again, you will sandblast the, the zirconia. Um, you will apply the SR link and opaque it where, where you need to. And then you just add your um, next go gingiva. Here is where I also see a, a nice uh, aspect of the versatility of, of the next go. How many times have we received a screw retained bridge? where you need to add um, gum to resorbed areas. And that bridge has been in the mouth for a few months or years. And now you need to carefully um, dry out that, um, the, the, the screw retained frame and um, to get all the, 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 the um, saliva and all of that uh, out of the, the, the equation. And you often get that that full, um, that ceramic bridge will crack. And uh, you need to remake and strip everything or you need to do a really bad bodge job and just cut away the, the crown where it's cracked and um, put um, opaque and your dentine and incisal in one bake and try to fire it while you're firing the, the, the gingiva at the same place. It's a nightmare. Um, this, this route you can see on the top uh, left, uh, there is the five unit bridge with the, the Pontex and there's a slight gap between the gum. Obviously in real life, the, the gap will be a lot bigger. Um, you can etch those, you can sandblast and etch the ceramic uh, and, and put on the, the right conditioning agents and you can build up the, um, with the next coat gingiva and you won't have the stress of the, the bridge cracking and breaking on you. Um, locator uh, blockouts, uh, equator blockouts, all those types of, of, of special attachments and ball attachments, you can mask with the opaque uh, of the Nexco gingiva. When you do the layering, it's quite important to contrast the colors. Uh, here I just placed a few stains um, and some gingiva and um, dentine um, all over the place just just for the the pick um, the neck areas should always be a little bit lighter um, the eminence the root eminence always shining through easiest way is to um, take the material out of the syringe in small half moon pieces um, on your mixing pad you um, the photo initiators aren't that um, uh, susceptible to the natural light. So you have got a good hour or two actually before they actually harden. Um, but if you use something like the blue face uh, in the lower part of the, the screen there, um, it will actually cure those little pieces in 20 seconds. Um, because of that um, poly wave, wave light, wavelength light. Um, close the syringes. Um, I just said 
don't worry too much about the the um, the, the polymerization uh, of natural light, but just get into a good habit of closing your syringes to stop dust and stuff going inside them, um, and also forgetting to put the tip on and the whole um, front part of the syringe ends up um, polymerizing. There is no real recipe. Um, like we said, all, all of the cases are case specific. So the sky is the limit. You can be really creative. Um, keep it simple. Um, maybe use three colors at most in the beginning. Or I just use three colors and you get away with a, quite a decent looking denture. Um, use the high chroma, those intensive dentines um, first um, and then start um, phasing the, the build up by using the medium chroma um, and then the very light uh, in the root eminence areas to follow the tooth. Um, I said use one stain. Um, you, you can mix those stains um, in, in, in every single um, part that you apply so that you get a, a bigger range of colors. Don't use the veins um, that, that also come in the kit. Um, don't overdo the veins. It ends up looking like a zombie mouth. Um, put a few veins maybe in behind the, the canine areas and maybe um, in freedom areas, but the veins can kill the, the whole look of the denture. Important, the stains need to be covered um, with transpar or clear. There is no opti-glaze or a glaze that you finish next go with. You need to um, rubber wheel, pumice and polish um, the areas that need to shine. I see I repeated myself. Uh, the key principle, keep it simple, stupid. Um, ask for loads of photos from your dentist. Uh, that, that's always helpful. And here I said, don't assume people's gingiva according to their skin color. Um, that is true. But when you, you come to the buildup, you can already kind of anticipate a color uh, due to ethnic, uh, someone's ethnic um, group. Um, but the, the variety can change. Um, I use the, the Optrosculpt tool and, and because of the Optrosculpt tool, I didn't really need to use the modeling liquid that uh, is also in the kit. The modeling liquid just helps the, the tool not to stick to the, 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 the actual Nexco composite. Final polymerization and finishing. Cover the whole area that you built up with SR gel and cure for 10 minutes. Um, this, this will stop the inhibition layer from forming because there's no oxygen. Um, follow the normal acrylic finishing procedures, carbide burst, rubber wheel, lollipop, um, gum stippling. Uh, it, the easiest way to do the gum stippling on these next care cases is to use a little rounded burr, uh, the smallest one you've got, and just, um, just tap it uh, as you go uh, in the areas that you'd like a little bit of gum stippling. Personally, I don't really fancy the gum, gum stippling all that much. It makes it really hard to polish. Um, and sometimes it can be um, accumulation of plaque in those areas. Um, the other way to do the gum stippling is to use a small uh, opaque-like brush uh, that you would normally apply um, crown and bridge opaque with. Um, and and do the stippling that way. Uh, you can use a universal polish to give it a real luster um, right at the end. And you'll end up with something looking like this. I mean, yes, 
for some people there is a lot of pink in there and the veins are a little bit over accentuated but when you look at it in the mouth it looks really natural um, a suggestion uh, in the lab that i worked in the uk we made custom shade guides uh, for our dentists that uh, well the favorite dentist i'd say um, which gives the dentist and the patient uh, a nice idea of the different tooth molds available uh, the different gum combinations uh, the different materials that you can use um, i actually flossed these four um, little tags in one um, one flask normal heat cure acrylic was used and then i did the cutbacks um, as as i showed you on uh, at the adjusting the denture um, slide if you don't want to do this for for all your dentists because you're going to say yes it's 100 rand for a card of teeth um, then you can remove the teeth in this in the in the wax stage and just press uh, gum uh, um, gum guides without any acrylic teeth in them just socket with the sockets um, which is also quite helpful for for the dentist and the patient to see um, what he can actually get um, the patient might have to pay in a little bit more if he wants a certain type of, of look, um, but that's all uh, stuff that you can uh, agree with with your dentist. Um, photo files, that's just if you don't want to make um, like five or six of these for your, for your top dentist, make one or two for those extremely special guys and, and send the, the rest a nice, um, glossy photo high resolution photo um, of of the different options so that he knows the, there's loads of options out there um, next go can also be uh, used within the mouth to cover cervical lesions um, recession i think this guy did quite a good job um, if i didn't have a nice before um, photo uh, but the 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 roots were really sticking out, and he he lightly sandblasted with the intraoral sandblaster and etched those um, those Nexco bits on there. Um, you can also do the you can also use veneering material like Emacs for this. We have Emacs press ingots that that also do the same. They can also do the same thing. Uh, silicone and um, acrylic where you actually do a whole uh, mask of the entire area yes i know it's not very common but there are guys that that do do stuff like that um, adding nexco to cat cam materials is also a possibility uh, ivoclorus launched in the new digital denture uh, puck which is a, a one piece pink and white um, and within the the middle portion where the two uh, where the dentine and the pink joins uh, it is not just a straight line uh, they have actually uh, figured a way how to um, include the neck areas within the teeth so uh, it gives it a really really um, good good look afterwards um, I also have a picture of a transitional denture or immediate. What I mean by that is when you do digital dentures, you, there will always be uh, a part where you need to do a try-in, uh, which they don't always tell you. Uh, they always say, show you the after pick, but there is a try-in uh, puck as well. and. You can either mill that or you can send it to your printer and print it. And you can add the, the Nexco onto that 
transitional denture, which is the try indenture. Um, and then you can help the patient understand where the gum is going to be, etc. The white, Mexico white, it's in the full 16 shade A to D, the bleach um, three and four. It has all the incisals, it has all the o OE effects, it's same like our um, style, same as our inline. Um, so there's a, a big variety in the shades. It's used mainly for the indirect um, inlays. You don't get that so much in, in labs anymore. Dentists will will uh, have got so many good compasses that they can use in the direct. Um, so they'll rather do it that way and where they use a matrix band um, to get the contacts right. Um, but where I think it's important to note is for Maryland bridges, Rochette bridges, maybe someone asked what is a Rochette bridge. It's basically a Maryland bridge with um, small holes cut in, cut in them. Uh, like periphery, periphered Maryland bridge, um, it it can also be added to your temporary crowns to give them a, a nice aesthetic look, and also where there's limited space and bruxism. Uh, if you have, if you're a chrome lab or or you do your own prosthetics on top of your chromes, then you all know that sometimes when you trim a a, a tooth, acrylic tooth there's not much left of it and it end up end up debonding because you've actually had to remove a lot of the pmma inside the base of the tooth and what you're left with is only the outer enamel shell which is normally made of a resin type composite um, um, so in this case you can actually build that tooth straight onto your um, chrome cobalt framework if you've sandblasted opaque and used the right build up shade looking at the aesthetic temporaries these are for long term temporaries um, we did a telio cutback placed some stain on them and then covered them with the nexco incisal um, before i did all of that uh, SR Connect was added to the surface um, and I left the sticky layer, very important, um, so that my incisal and my stain would bond to, to that inhibition layer. Denture teeth modifications are also possible, um, especially on the Funaris teeth. The Funaris is a four-layer four -layer tooth with the outer layer mainly being composite. Um, which is the same type of composite um, that that will stick to the Nexco Nexco um, sizal composites. Um, the use of the duplication flask in our um, in South Africa really doesn't get used a lot. I think uh, it's it is for controlled. Um, for a controlled cutback uh, with the, the different composites. Uh, it's for the overpress technique where you take um, silicone uh, impressions over that within the flask and then you can cure it right through the transparent lid. Um, it has an aluminium base um, so that you can actually just keep everything in position um, nicely for a, a number of years streamlined uh, workflow um, you need to be really aware of the different steps that you need to take uh, there are three screws that you need to screw the the whole um, flask down while you injecting the the composite um, so it is a little bit of a learning curve but uh, the re results are fantastic when you do a full composite um, bridge. Then I'm just going to add this in. The, the composite main concerns are discoloration. Uh, a study in Japan by Nissen 
um, University in Tokyo was done um, by subjecting uh, different brands of composites uh, to different uh, types of food. Uh, and you can see on the Manhattan um, chart there that uh, red wine is the main culprit and the main culprit for all of them. Um, so I'm not saying you should stop drinking red wine. Um, just be mindful if you have loads of composite um, inside your mouth. Um, I just added the, the, um, the Scilab um, uh, slide in there. It is uh, something that was invented in 1976 already, uh, where they have a, a mathematical uh, way of, of, of detecting the, the differences with colors, um, especially when, when looking at two similar products in similar light. Um, the, the little triangle in front of the E is it called the delta. It's, uh, and the E is, um, is a German word for, for um, sensation. Um, and, and that actually just means the different, uh, the, different the, the distance in um, differences of one material to, to, the, to another material. And um, I'd say that this is the future of, of, um, of shade taking shade matches uh, and um, a very clever dental technician um, you can check it out on youtube um, as has got a, a software called elab that you can install and it works out the recipe quite well and helps you to 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 get a really good shade match um, with uh, especially difficult anterior teeth in our conclusion, um, it's an innovative lab composite. It's got great mechanical properties. Uh, it's independent of, of a curing device. So you must just check out your wavelength and your light intensity. Bond strength is fantastic. It's low wearing. Because of, because of those nano fillers, it has opalescence and fluorescence inside, which gives it a nice Tyndall effect which refracts the light and it's gloss stable um, thank you for listening and keep calm and we'll hear what the president says tonight um, just remain positive and if there are any questions you're welcome to, to email me that's my email address um, or you can ask me now if you, if you have any, any other questions Thank you very much, Werner. Um, so far, we've just got two questions here. Um, they're both from Ceramica Dental. Um, Peter. One question that he did ask, you did cover it in your lecture as well. Maybe you can just repeat it again. Can you use modeling liquid to soften the composite? Um, they, either class says no. Um, the, the modeling liquid actually will react neg negatively when you do your build-ups. So you, you don't really want to include them in, into your, your, your build-up. I don't know if that answers the question. Yes. And then just another question also from Peter. I'm going to help you from my side because I know you're on, a, on an iPad on that side. He was just asking, what instruments do you use to layer the composite? If I am correct, I just want to confirm with you that it was the optoscope, right? Yes, the op optoscope, the gray handle one, which is the anterior, um, for use for anterior tools. It actually has a little ruler. That's it. That's perfect. Okay. So this one is actually, the, this is the anterior and posterior instrument together. The gray one is the optoscope anterior. The main difference between um, the two instruments, obviously more for the dentist itself, the gray one has got a straight shank, so that's for the anterior teeth. And then the black one, which is the posterior um, instrument, has got the 90 degree bend. Very nice. The posterior tips and the anterior tips are interchangeable. 
I just want to go over and show you the picture specifically that this is just the anterior tip. It got, it's got two different sizes pads. The black one is a six millimeter pad in diameter and then the green pad is our four millimeter pad. I just want to pop up the rulers. On the gray instrument, we've got two indexes. Um, the first index is only millimeter indexes. So this is nice if you've got a fracture, say, on your lateral and you just want to have a quick look what is the length of the incisal tip of the 1-1 one, one, and then transfer it over to the 2-2. Two, two. And then the other index that's also very helpful, especially intraorally, but I'm also sure on the desk as well, is the long axis inclination. So it's got a little triangle in the middle that you position in between your central incisors. And then these stippling of the lines actually indicate the long axis so that we don't create beachy teeth, but we actually have teeth that incline medially. Any other questions? If you would like to ask Werner a question directly, you can just unmute yourself from your side, put on your camera, and then we can have a nice discussion. I'm going to give it another minute or two if there's any more questions coming up. While we wait for the questions, I just want to share another screen with you guys, if I can find it on my side. Everyone is looking for these face shields to work with. Um, Iberdent has had some laser cut and we do have some stock left. Stock is obviously limited during this time as the material import um, is a little bit of a diff difficulty at this stage. The visor itself is a 7 millimeter, 0.7 millimeter thickness pet material. The other components are made of one millimeter um, thickness. It's really nice and durable. You can clean it with alcohol. Um, it fits very nice and firm, comfortably around the head. Um, it doesn't slip downwards and it also doesn't fog as well as the inside surface of the visor is actually an anti-fog covering. All right, Batman, we've got another question here for you. Dr. Pillay is asking, the pink treatment of recession, was that done directly in the mouth? Or was it something that was taken out, built up outside, and then um, cemented as an indirect restoration? That was done directly in the mouth by the, the actual clinician. Um, so he lightly sandblasted those root areas with, with an with a intraoral sandblaster. Um, and then he etched those and then he used the helio bond um, to, to attach the, 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 um, the Nexco opaque first and then the, the Nexco gingiva. All right. Thank you very much. All right. I'm going to close. Werner, bye-bye, thank you for listening. I don't think we always realize what products are out there that can only make our work life more interesting and ultimately to enjoy the art of dentistry. Giving someone a smile and gums back is one of the biggest privileges we as the dental professional have got to give. If you've got any topic suggestion for our lockdown sessions, please email info at ivodent.co.za. Catch this session to rewatch and all previous sessions on Ivodent Essays YouTube channel and the link on our Facebook and our WhatsApp groups. If you want to be put onto our closed WhatsApp group, please send your cell phone number through to info at ivodent.co.za. Please keep a lookout for our lecture line up for next week, which will be confirmed shortly. Lockdown last day, next Thursday, 30th of April. Dr. Mark Bowes will, will be sharing some invaluable tips on zirconia. More specifically, Prime, the new breakthrough true aesthetic zirconia by Ivoclav Ibident, the standout metal ceramic of the century. Thank you very much for joining in on our session. I hope you have a lovely day. See you guys all next week. That's all from us. Goodbye.